time to bring home the bacon, Neddy. That's not bacon. That's sirloin, Teddy. Can't be sirloin. Not from a piggy, Neddy. But that's sirloin, Teddy. No, it isn't, Neddy. Is Teddy. Isn't Neddy. Is Teddy. Isn't Neddy. Is Teddy. Hmm. Looks like I've been playing the fool, Neddy. Yeah, that's all right, Teddy. Thanks awfully, Neddy. Well, thanks a lot, Neddy. No, it doesn't matter at all. Jolly simple. No. No, 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 no. that's perfectly right. Do the same. Good morning. I'd care to purchase chicken, please. Don't come here with that posh talk, you nasty stuck-up twit. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon? A chicken, sir, certainly. Here Thank we are. You. And how much does that work out to per pound, my good fellow? Per pound, you slimy trollop. What kind of a ponce are you? <laughs> I'm sorry? Four and six a pound, sir. Nice and ready for roasting. <laughs> I see, and I'd care to purchase some stuffing in addition, please. Use your own, you great poovy ponagger. <laughs> what? Oh, certainly, sir, some stuffing. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, says the great queen, like a lardy da pufter. <laughs> I beg your pardon. That's all right, sir, call again. Excuse me. What is it now, you great pillock? <laughs> well, I can't help noticing that you insult me, and then you're polite to me alternately. I'm terribly sorry to hear that, sir. It's all right, doesn't really matter. Tough titty of it, did you, nasty spotted prancer? <laughs> uh, so sorry, I asked for tea. Thank you very much. Well, uh, we've had the dessert, and then... And so, the first item, the last item on our menu of fun is uh, coffee. That's just a metaphor. We come... Would you mind keeping it down, please? We come, as, as I said just now, to the coffee. This is Ken Clean Air System, the great white hope of the British boxing world. After three fights and only two convictions, his manager believes that Ken is now ready to face the giant American, Saturn V. The great thing about Ken is, is that he's almost totally stupid. Every morning, he jogs the 47 miles from his two-bedroom, eight-bathroom, six-up, two-down, three-to-go house in Brighton to the government's pesticide research centre at Shoreham. Nobody knows why. Basically, Ken is a very gentle, home-loving person. I remember when one of his stick insects had a knee infection. He stayed up all night rubbing it with germaline and banging its head on the table. <laughs> oh, such a pretty baby. He was so kind and gentle. He really considerate to his mother. And not at all the kind of person you'd expect to pulverize your opponent into a bloody mass of flesh and raw bone, spitting teeth and fragments of gum into a ring which would become one man's hell and Ken's glory. Every morning, at his little three-room semi near Reading, Ken gets up at three o'clock. And goes back to bed again, because it's far too early. <laughs> at seven o'clock, Ken gets up, he has a quick shower, a rub down, gets into his tracksuit, and goes back to bed again. <laughs> at 7.50 every morning, Ken's trainer runs the 13,000 miles from his two-room lean to in Bangkok, and gets him up. I used to wake Ken up with a crowbar on the back of the head. But I recently found that this was too far from his brain and it wasn't getting through to him anymore. So I now wake him up with a steel peg driven into his skull with a mallet. For breakfast every day, Ken places a plate of liver and bacon under his chair and locks himself in the cupboard. Well, he's having a lot of mental difficulties with his breakfasts. Uh, but this is temperament caused by a small particle of brain in his skull. <laughs> if I move that, it'll be perfectly all right. At 8.30, the real training begins. Ken goes back to bed and his trainer gets him up.
8.30 every morning, Ken arrives at what he thinks is the gym. Sometimes it's a sweet shop, sometimes it's a private house. Today, it's a hospital. For lunch, Ken crouches down beside the road and rubs gravel into his hair. <laughs> but lunch doesn't take long. Ken's soon up on his feet and back to bed. And his trainer has to run the 49,000 miles from his two-bedroom, six-living-room treehouse in Kyoto to wake him up. Hello. Uh, when Ken is in a really deep sleep like this one, uh, the only way to wake him up is to saw his head off. <laughs> What is he like in the ring? This human dynamo, this 18 stone bantamweight battling ram. We asked his sparring partner and one-time childhood sweetheart, Maureen Spencer. Oh, I think that if Ken uh, keeps his right or gets in with the left jab and uh, takes the fight to his man, well, uh, he should go for a cut eye in the third and uh, put Wilcox on the canvas by six. Ken's opponent in Tuesday's fight is Petula Wilcox, the Birmingham girl who was a shorthand typist before turning pro in 1968. She's keen on knitting and likes Cliff Richard records. How does she rate her chances against Ken? Well, I'm a southpaw, and I think this will confuse him, particularly with his brain pattern. Well, ladies, and get a ball. On my right, on the town of Rygate, in the county of Kent. The heavyweight John of our law, the love of the other John, the club of the John, hold on to John of the day, Mr. Ken Cleaner System! <laughs> and the mother, Miss Petula Wilcox. self-defense. Obviously, boxing must have its limits, but providing they're both perfectly fit, I can see nothing wrong with one healthy man beating the living daylights out of a little school. It's quick and it's fun. Thank you. 